want you to sing this with us. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Help us say this right here. Turn your Bibles to John 5. John 5. Yes, Yochanan. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Yochanan. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And the word of the Lord reads, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. And when Yeshua saw him lying there and knew that he had already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, everybody say this with me, do you want to be made well? And another translation says, do you want to be made whole? Amen. So we just want to take a look and uh, we want to take a look at this because it's amazing how when God, when he's speaking, he can preach a message without even opening his mouth because he's that type of God. He's so meticulous. He can speak and have things going on. It's not a coincidence. We were just talking about how this particular man, how it says in verse 1, after this there was a feast of the Jews, and Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem they were by the sheep gate. And so when you do your historical studies and when you look at it, I have a list of gates here. This particular man, he was found by what? The sheep gate. There were many gates. He could have been found by the fish gate. Each gate represents something in particular. He could have been found by the old gate. He could have been found by the dung gate. Y'all know what kind of gate that is? Yeah, it's, it's, it's right what it says. It's a dung gate. Uh, he could have been found by the water gate or the fountain gate. He could have been found anywhere, but he was found by the sheep gate. And so when we think about this, the word of the Lord tells us in Proverbs, Proverbs, let's see if I can get this to move. There it is, moving. Proverbs 25 and 2. The word of the Lord says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. So it's God's glory. He, he'll conceal this thing. But watch this. The glory of kings is to search it out. So it's my job as a believer to make sure that not only am I reading the scriptures, but I want to make sure that I have the mindset, I know what Elohim was saying, and that I'm searching this thing out. Somebody say search it out. So we need to know that when this man, a certain man, when he was found by the sheep gate, Oh my goodness, my soul got happy. I was like, oh my goodness, God, what is the significance of the sheep gate? And so this was the first gate that was mentioned in the book of Nehemiah. Not only was it the first book, I mean, the first uh, gate that was mentioned in Nehemiah, it was also the last gate that was mentioned in Nehemiah when they were rebuilding the gate. Amen, when they were rebuilding everything. So in this particular gate, uh, the sheep and the lambs, they were sacrificed, and this is the particular gate that they came through. So that's, that's just the, the little light level of it. You know, it goes deeper than that. Uh, in John 10 and 7, I want you to get that in your Bibles, John 10 and 7. The word of the Lord says, Then Yeshua said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. I am the dalit. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved 
and will go in and out and find pasture. And then it goes on to read, the thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. So when we, get, when we look at this text, we see that we know that uh, when Yeshua, when he showed up, he is the door. He was the access way. He was the pathway. And this certain man that was paralyzed for 38 years was sitting in what, guess what? The shepherd, the good shepherd showed up. He said, I am that. I am the door. I am the dollar. And so when we look at this, and, and this is just to uh, refresh your memory because I know you already remember this, but Dalit, it is talking about, uh, this is the fourth Hebrew olive bet, Dalit, and there it is, and it looks like a door. Everybody see that? And so the picture meaning is a door, and it means pathway or access. So the door, the access, the way that the man should have gone showed up on that day. Not only did that, that, uh, that access was made available on that particular day, it was in a place that was called Bethesda. And so the Bible tells us that this particular place called Bethesda is called the house of mercy. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Let's finish dealing with uh, this Dalit. So Dalit is spelled Dalit Lamed Tav. Each Hebrew uh, Olivet is so beautiful because... Uh, Elohim, he preaches his word and he tells us about him through the Hebrew uh, language and there's no other language that's like that. So we learn to appreciate that. Amen. So when Yeshua, when he showed up, he said, I am the access. I am the doorway. And so Dalit Lamed Tav, it means the access of the authority of the covenant. This is what, this is who showed up. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm getting more. Look, I'm, I'm more excited than y'all are. Amen. I think I'm going to preach myself happy. So you're sure he is the one that is to give us and grant us that access. Somebody say access. And so we were talking about this place of Bethesda. My goodness today. We were talking about this place of Bethesda. And I want you to look at it because it says in the Hebrew, uh, this particular word it means the house of mercy. And so this certain man who was sitting there, I am going to get to the point in just a minute. Anybody like long stories? I don't. But I am going to get there. So this particular person, this certain man was sitting at the house of mercy. And so we see that when we look at the Hebrew keys of revelation, you know, we do that quite often, just breaking that word down. We see here, we see here that there's, there's the Hebrew olive bet, which is bet, and then you have yud and tom. So this is the sign of God's authority that was in the house. Amen? Amen? All right. And then also, watch this. This word, Bethesda, this is the word for mercy. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. Y'all been saying it, but do we really know what we've been saying? Amen? Okay, so look, mercy here it is, mercy. Here you have a chet, and you have a samich, and then you have uh, the dalit. Amen? So this is the pathway. This is the pathway of refuge or protection. So this man was sitting at a place of protection, a place of refuge, but guess what? He was just sitting there. I can get to my text. Amen. We just wanted to show you that. So what is the end result? I want you to ask this self. I want you to ask yourself this question right here. What is the end result when you lay by the gate and never enter in the gate? What is the end result of that? See, this man, he represents two type of people, two types. And we're going to find ourselves on today. The word of the Lord says that he was a sick man. Somebody say sick man. Sick man. And, and uh, I'm going to tell you, when I looked at that text and it said, uh, when Yeshua asked him a question and it said, the sick man answered, 
That bothered me. It bothered me. I read it over and over again. Because if I'm a sick man, everything that comes out of my mouth is going to be sick. There's no wholeness in the things that I'm speaking. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. As a man thinketh, so is he. Thank you. And so this sick man, one, one represents uh, the unsaved person. So this is the unsaved person. I, I just want you to think about this in, 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 in the text of what we're talking about. This sick man, he represented the unsaved person who's surrounded by the world that's filled of chaos. Why? Because at this particular place, if you remember, we said that he was at the pool of Bethesda, which was what? The place of mercy, a place of protection, a place of refuge. And who was there? Yeshua. He was the good shepherd. The one who allows, you know, the, the place where the sheep were to enter in. This was the place, but this man was sitting by the place. He had not entered into the place. Amen? And so no one can come into the Father except what? Except you, first, you got to be drawn by the Holy Spirit. Nobody can come except you're drawn by the Holy Spirit. And there is only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. Amen. But guess what? The Son was there, and he showed up. Okay, so dealing with this particular sick man, the battleground was in his mind. When Yeshua asked, when Yeshua asked, and we're going to go back to the text, he asked him, because he had seen the condition that he had been in, John 5, go back there with me. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit, but I... I I, I truly, I love the word. I love the word and uh, I, I want all that Elohim has for me. I don't want to just read the word, but I want the word to read me. I want the word to turn me inside out. I want to make an exchange with Elohim. When, I'm, when I embrace his word, I want something to happen on the inside of me. I don't want it to be like another little book that I'm reading, you know, just to pass some time away. Amen. All right, so John 5 and 7. He said, the sick man answered him. I told you I had a problem with that. The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, but when I am coming, another steps down before me. So a little bit before then, it was telling us how not only was he at the pool of Bethesda, but there were five porches. Somebody say five. Look, behold, hey, look and behold. We're looking for whom? We're looking for the Father. We're looking for the Son. Amen. Hi. Everybody say hi. Not in hi. We're talking about the Hebrew Olivet. Amen. The fifth letter of the Hebrew Olivet is, or some say hey. Yud, hey, vav, hey. Okay. So there were five porches. And, and just to talk a little bit more before we move on, there were a multitude of people who were sick, lame, paralyzed. They were just laying out everywhere. Can you imagine being there? But there was a certain man that received healing. One particular person, amen? Okay, so going back to, to where we were, will you, meet, will you be made whole? The battleground is where? The, the battleground is is in the mind. Look at uh, 3 John 2. 3 John and 2. When you get it, say amen. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers, somebody say soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. God is not just concerned about, uh, you know, little things. He, he's concerned about everything, every aspect of our lives. It says even as your soul health. He wants us to be healthy in our thinking. 
So when we go back to this man, the certain man that was sitting here and waiting, the first thing that he did when Yeshua asked him a question, he gave an excuse. So we say that this particular man in this particular sense, we, we were going to talk about two different people. This person, we're talking about the unsaved person, the person who's giving excuses. Well, I would give my life to Christ, but it's too hard. I would do it, but you know, I'm still young. I still have a life to live. I, I, I would give my life to Christ, but you know, it's too many hypocrites in the church. I, I would do it. I would do it. Don't you know before Yeshua asked him a question, he already had the answer? So before a word is on your tongue, the word of God tells us that he knows it completely. He already knows. Amen. So I need to make sure that uh, I'm not making any type of excuses. Amen. I need to make sure if I'm an unsaved person that I, any excuse that I give is not going to be enough. Amen. All right. So moving on, he said, the sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another one steps down on me. That seems pretty justified, doesn't it? All I know, I was just thinking, man, man, if I could just figure out a way, I was there. I was, I was, I, if I could just figure out a way to get in that pool. But many times we are waiting on Elohim, but he's waiting on you. He said, it is finished. I already did what I'm going to do. It's finished. Amen? Okay, so let's look at this. So where is your will? I'm talking to the person who is unsaved. Where is your will? It's not God's will that any man should perish, but all come into what? The knowledge of the truth, but many will perish because why? Because they have a will. It would be unfair for him to force you to come into salvation. That's like the man waiting. He was waiting. Nobody's going to force you, even though he, I'm sure he wanted a good push. But nobody's going to force you into salvation. Amen. So let's talk about the process of wholeness. And then I just need a quick time check because I, I forgot to look when I first got up. The process to wholeness. Number one, number one, I need to recognize that I need help. And without God, I can do nothing. Number two, the word of the Lord says, confess your sins with the intent not to ever return. Look at 1 John 9. 1 John 1 and 9, excuse me. 1 John 1 and 9, do you have it? Okay, thank you. Now I can. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say, because... Uh, I guess he just knew we were going to have something else to say. He said, if we say, look, 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 don't even try. Whatever excuse you're getting ready to say, I already know what you're going to say. So watch this. He said, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. It's so many teachings out there these days. I mean, people are saying, I am God. I don't have to go to the church. It's so much stuff out here. I was in a debate with a young man. I'm not going to go into it for an hour. We were supposed to be in training. I, I, we, I just had to share with him about the word. And I just invited him. I said, you know, just come out. We'll study. He said, you don't want to study with me. You want to debate with me. I don't want to debate with you. I just want to give you the word. Amen. Because there are so many doctrines out there that have people bound. The traditions of man make the word of God what? Now, in effect, we'd rather hold on to the tradition versus holding on to the scripture. Getting back to number two, confess your sins with the intent. With the intent. Everybody say, slow it down. Slow it down. Amen. Confess your sins with the intent not to ever return. This uh, is a primary example of the Hebrew word um, shub. 
Chuv. Shin. What else? What else is in there? Bet. And come on, help me out. Shin Vav Bet. So I need to destroy what has been established on the inside of me. When I destroy this thing, I don't have any intent of returning back to that same thing. Amen? So when I confess, when I truly confess, when I give it to him for real, for real, somebody say F-R-F-R. When I give it to him for real, for real, it's my intention. God, I, I, I can't, I, can, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. God, I repent from this thing. Destroy this thing that's rooted and grounded in me. God, make an exchange with me. Exchange my will for your will. God, you do this. Take the, Lord, destroy this thing. Not, Lord, you, you know, uh, not, you know I got problems in this area, God. Now, we, we got to get rid of the excuses. Everybody say that. I've got to get rid of every excuse because it's never going to be good enough. Number three, we're talking about process to wholeness. Number three, renew your mind and make the exchange. According to Romans 12 and 2, let's look at it. Romans 12 and 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. It says, don't be conformed to this world. In other words, uh, if I am a believer... And, I'm, and I've given my life to Yeshua. I'm not trying to be like the world. I don't want to look like the world. I left that. I don't want to look like that anymore. Amen? I don't want to sing like it. I don't want to dance like it. I don't want to dress like it. I want to be like him. Sir, ma'am, would we see him? That's what we want to be like. Amen? So that's what I want to be when I grow up. Amen. Come on. Everybody say grow up today. Today, T-A-D-A-Y, today. All right. <laughs> All right, number four, refuse to go back and get rid of excuses. Look at Galatians 5 and 1. Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which... Meshach has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised and it goes on, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again. And it talks more about that. Okay. All right. So I need to make sure that uh, once, once Elohim has set me free from this particular area, I don't need to go back to that area. The scripture tells us that. Why? Because when I go back to that area, I'm going to be worse off. Amen? All right. Now, let's go back to number, let's look at uh, 2 Peter 2 and 20. I think that's what I was looking for. 2 Peter 2 and 20. When you get it, say amen. There it is. There it is. Here it is. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yeshua Meshach, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For what? For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than have known it to turn away from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb. Watch this. A dog returns to his own vomit, and a sow, talking about a pig, having washed to her wallowing in the myrrh. See, once God, once Elohim set you free, I don't want to, I don't want to, <laughs> will the enemy come to try to pull you back? Yes. But my desire, my love for him has to be greater than what my desire was for whatever that was that had me entangled. Amen. Glory to God. I have to make sure that I love Elohim more. Somebody say I love him more. 
See, when you love him more, there's no uh, question, there's no debate, there is no uh, wishy washiness. You know, sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down, sometimes I'll never be found. Did I just make that up? Did I start rapping like uh, DJ used to do? Yeah, sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. No, when I love Elohim more, I think about, you know what, I don't want to disappoint him again. God, I love you more. God, I love you more than this temporary thing. Whatever this thing is, is trying to uproot and stay rooted in me. Remember we were talking about destroying what was established in me? Well, if it's destroyed, if it's not no longer connected to me, then there's nothing in me. Amen? Glory to God. So we need to love him more. Somebody say, I love him more. Oh, we bless your name. We love you more. Just take one moment right there. Father, we love you more. I love you more than these earthly, temporal things. We thank you, Father. We bless you for that now. Hallelujah. All right, and then number five. Number five. Process to wholeness. Somebody say process. process. Don't use this word, I'm in a process. Don't use that for an excuse, but there is a process. Number five, uh, connect to a local congregation that's rightly dividing the word. Look, I, I, I spoke this earlier saying that there, there's so much out there, you know, and uh, if you're not in your word, you're just going to go with the flow. And I'm thinking, why, 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 are you, why are you listening to that? If your pastor is teaching something that's contrary to the word of Elohim uh, and doesn't seem like he's trying to change, it may be time to leave. Amen. Because there are churches that are rightly dividing the word. Oh, you, dream, you being too judgmental. Well, why do we have the word? Am I not supposed to use the word to judge? What is the absolute truth that I need to go by? Amen. So I need to make sure that I'm connected to a congregation because uh, I, I heard someone, I was speaking with someone, and they told me, uh, well, when I go this, to this particular church, they don't judge me. For real? Okay, so what you're saying is that because they're agreeing with your lifestyle, you feel comfortable. That's what you're saying. So that means your toes don't ever get stepped on. That's what you're saying. It's always joy, 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 not uh, repent, repent, repent. Okay, so we, I, I won't see y'all, but there is a place for you. All right, so let's look at Psalms 13. Let's look at Psalms 13. <laughs> yeah, Psalms 92 and 13. Thank you, babe. The price has already been paid. All right, Psalms 92 and 13. Those who are planted at their house because they don't have to go to church because, you know, church is in them. Don't, don't, don't play. All right, so this is your, your word. Those who are planted in the house of Yahweh shall flourish in the courts of Elohim. I love this scripture. It goes on to say, they shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh. See that, y'all wonder why I'm so fresh. I'm fresh like that, hey. All right, they shall be fresh. My sons, they hate when I say A. Hey. They shall be, A. Hey. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that Yahweh is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. And if I am in him, what? There is no unrighteousness in me. Slap your neighbor upside the head. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more scripture. Uh, in in num number six, if you fall, here it is, my mentor, she, she has passed, but I have other mentors now. Amen. But there's one thing that she would tell me as a baby. Uh, that was about 23 years ago. Amen. Uh, if you fall, get up. If you fall, get up. Don't wallow in it. Don't make excuses for it. 
Don't make it a lifestyle. Amen? And make it excuses for it. Amen. He is able. The word of the Lord in Jude 25, it says he is able to keep you from what? Falling. I really didn't like that song. We fall down, we get up. I, I know, I know seven, uh, you know, a righteous man falls seven times a day. I know that, but that's not talking about that. Amen. All right, so he's able to keep us from falling. And then number seven, disciple others as you grow. Disciple others as you grow. Look at Psalms 51 and 10. Psalms 51 and 10. You have it? All right. Create in me a clean heart, O Elohim, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. There's Yeshua. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. See, we've been trying to convert sinners, but we hadn't been converted ourselves. It said then. It says, then, after, look, uh, look, verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation, upload me, uphold me by your generous spirit, then I will teach transgressors, gressors, gressors, transgressors, there it is, got it out. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, amen, and sinners shall be converted. See, the sinner man, they're not totally convinced by what you're saying because you're kicking it with them, Amen. It's not for everybody, but if if the shoe fit, we're going to wear it. Amen. So uh, in order for me to teach them, I have to have gone in that way, and I have victory in that way. Amen? All right, moving right on. Somebody say, will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? Amen. And then let's look. I told you that the sick man also represented another. It, It could mean several things, but another person that the sick man represented was what? The unbelieving believer. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. See, here it is. One of the problems that we've been having with the church is that we've been going to the church, watching and waiting, just like the sick man. He was sitting, he was watching and waiting, watching and and waiting. Well, eventually, I should have some evidence in my life. Amen. I'm still wearing diapers, and I'm 14 years old. I've been saved 13 years, 10 years, you know, four years, and I'm still wearing diapers. There's something wrong. So I can't be like the sick man who was wishing and hoping and praying and just watching and waiting. Here's the question that I want to ask you on today. Are you just lying there? Are you just lying there? Because why? Stagnant water, what? Amen. We, we can't have any type of stagnation in our lives. Am, am I growing in the word? Okay, now I'm saved. Now I'm beginning to uh, renew my mind. You know, we talked about the process. We did all of that. We already, we, we've been doing that for years. Now there's another part. Am I fruitful? Or am I like the paralyzed man waiting on Elohim when Elohim is waiting on me? So we need to make sure that we do what? Get our faith up. Get our faith up. I was driving um, one of our cars. uh, I was driving the the big truck, the the avalanche. And I was just saying, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for how you're beginning to just unfold things and I thank you for your manifested blessings and you know I'm all deep and spiritual God I just thank you and then he said I was waiting for your faith to catch up I could have pulled over I'm already there my word has already gone forth I'm waiting on you to catch up I'm waiting on you to stop waiting on me Do something. 
all that power, all that word, all of that that you're receiving every Tuesday and Wednesday and Sunday, whatever day. He said, I'm waiting on you, boo. <laughs> Amen. It just fit. Everything that we need is in the word. So we've got to make sure that we're not unbelieving believers, but we take Elohim at his word and we move from a place of stagnation to a place of fruit producers. Amen. I'm moving to a place where I'm discipling others. That I will come to church to receive a word, but I came to church and I brought a word. Amen. Glory to God. Not only did I come to church, not just to receive a blessing, but I am the blessing. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm connected to him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only am I coming to the place of worship to receive prayer, but I am able to lay hands on the sick and they get well. Amen. Hallelujah, that's walking in your divine purpose. That's walking in, your, in, in uh, fruitfulness, amen? All right, so faith is not just what? Faith is not just believing, but has a corresponding action. Amen, glory to God. I'm almost finished. What's coming out of your mouth? What's coming out of your mouth? Because... The sick man answered, and everything that came out of his mouth, it was sick. There was no wholeness, there was no fruit, there was no maturity. Amen. We're talking about what's coming out of the mouth. The death in life is what? In the power of the tongue. So what am I, the things that I'm saying, am I producing life? Or am I producing death? Why? Because the things that I'm meditating on, if, you, if you're wondering why is this going on, why, you know, uh, I talked about this one day uh, in the scripture, it talks about if all is well, why am I like this? If all is well, why, why, why is all of this going on? Well, what's going on in your mind, first of all? We got to get a checkup from what? Amen. Y'all rhyming real good on this morning. As a man thinketh, so is he. So until I what? Until I submit my will to God's will. It's not going to be a change. It's going to be a cycle. You're going to come up for the same old thing. <laughs> come up for the same old thing. I'm that unbelieving believer. No victory, just up and down. I, no, he, I have to come to a place of stability, and it has to be once and for all, settled in my mind that God is God, that Elohim is God, that he is Lord over my life. That means he reigns. Amen? He's Lord over my life. Amen. All right, all right. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you for your word. All right. Welcome to an Empowerment of Faith broadcast. We're Welcome. excited. We're excited about what is happening you know, we have a unique assignment in the body of believers, and we're really working on extracting the truth of what the Holy Spirit said from the original language. This is why we refer back to the Hebrew language so very often. We have found out and have facts and proof that all of the scriptures were originally written in Hebrew. Right. Now, we have a tool that the Holy Spirit has given us, and we call it the keys of revelation, whereas we go into the letter word, the meanings of each letter that spell the original words in the original language. Yeshua said, I am the olive, I am the top. What he was telling us, that he is the letter words that spell the word of God. So that's what we get that from, and that's our assignment to extract truth from exactly what the Holy Spirit said. You know, the, whole, the scriptures have its own personal lexicon, and that's what that is. Its own personal translator of what the word is, and that's Yeshua himself. So Renee and I, we're excited about it. You know, we've been doing some teaching, some series, Fight for the Family. We're definitely standing for that, uh, going against all error by releasing the sword of truth. And we have another series coming up, and we're going to deal with Christian racism and racism that's in Christianity. Now, we know 
that the word Christ come from the Hebrew word Mashiach, uh, which means Messiah. And in the anointing, there is no racism or races. But yet we have this problem that is very evident in many believers' heart not even knowing it. Well, we'll be teaching that series real soon, along with some other things that will really help you grow. We're breaking all barriers, denominational barriers, uh, religious barriers. Yes. We just want you to come out and worship with us. Uh, if you want to view our broadcast in its entirety, you can always go to our website at empowermentoffaith.org. Mm -hmm. and, and, but most importantly, we want to see your face right. in the place. And right. so we'll have more information about when and where you can come and worship with and us. Then we're on Facebook and with Periscope and yes. Instagram and I mean, we're out here. <laughs> we're out here <laughs> teaching and preaching the Word of God. Now, we, we are diverse. Uh, we're a group of people that's, we got a, a, the, a lot of millenniums coming to our ministry, young people seeking truth. They see what's been going on and right. something can't be right. And if you just want to break away from what I call romantic Christianity and Constantine's rules and regulations, we're the place for you. But yet, we're sticking with truth. That's we right. love everybody. And most of all, we love you. God bless you now. Real good.